Hello everyone, um, I just thought I would make a video about um, how to change the halogen uh, rear lights on an F56 for um, the genuine Union Jack uh, versions because um, it's slightly different to just plugging them in and uh, away you go. You've got to do a little bit of stuff with the connector behind the light um, and then code it in afterwards. So I thought I'd give you a little bit of a video on how to do it because I haven't really seen people doing it on the halogen version. Um, you might have seen videos from uh, Ben Rolfe who released one this week about how to install the aftermarket Union Jack lights which are literally just plug and play. They come with um, some control modules in the back. Um, but these ones, uh, you've got to do a bit more um, fiddling around. Uh, the reason that I went for the genuine ones was uh, literally just because um, they were a pretty good deal on eBay. So um, this one uh, I had to reseal with some black uh, silicon uh, sealant, which uh, was easy enough to do. Um, so I got both of these lights uh for £85 off of eBay, which is a really good deal. Um, they did have some scratches on them. Uh, a couple of tiny scratches left, but I sanded them down. That's a lot, a lot of dust because they've been sitting inside. <laughs> I'll just wipe that off. There you go. Yeah, they've, uh, they did have some scratches on, uh, but I sanded and polished them, and they come out really, really well. So... Um, yeah, I think £85 well spent. <laughs> uh, let's hope that they fit. The only um, issue I might have is that uh, where I've had to seal uh, between the plastic here and, or uh, well, the, the clear plastic and the black plastic, you can see there's the sealant in there. It's not the tidiest job, but it's watertight. I've tested it. So um, yeah, this adds a little bit of thickness because the factory sealant is like, really really thin so um, I'm hoping that the lights around uh, will go on okay um, but yeah I thought I'd um, do a little video on how to install these lights and code them up afterwards um, so the first thing you're gonna need is a trim tool apologies by the way for <laughs> I'm literally just using my phone because I don't have a, a camera with a tripod so uh, I'll do my best but yeah, basically you want to have a trim tool and in order to take off the black trim or chrome trim, uh, you literally just put it in at the side. There's three clips. Um, actually, you know what I'll do? Open the boot first. <laughs> Let's do that. Uh, I'm going to have to do this with one hand, which is exciting. You can see me there holding my, <laughs> holding my phone. So it goes in at the side, there's a few clips down the left hand side uh, and then some at the top as well. Once you've popped those off, uh, you can get your fingers behind, should just come away. There we go. So, and then the bottom clips kind of hold it in uh, so it kind of like pivots out. So that's easy enough to do. Uh, and then you'll see that there are three little Torx screws um, that you can take off. So I'll just grab my ratchet spanner. Um, I believe they're T20, um, T20 Torx heads in there. Uh, oh, this is all wet because it's been sat in my boot. Uh, that's tidying it up. So literally, all you want to do is take these screws out, loosen them off first. They do go in quite far, um, so especially you'll find when you do them up, it might be a bit tricky to kind of get the threads. Uh, to get some purchase on it. Oh, it's 
the last one out. <sighs> so now what you want to do is go into this little panel here, uh, open that up, and this is where you can access the back of the light. I'm not sure if uh, I'm going to be able to show you what it, well, no point really in showing you what it looks like behind because you can't get your head in anyway. Um, but I'll show you on these lights. So on the back, uh, on the back, you've got your connector, and then there's these little black tabs on the on each side. One there, and uh, where's the other one there? And what you want to do is push those inwards towards the centre of the light, and basically unhooks it from the uh, body of the car. So it will give that a go. Um, apologies if, uh, <laughs> if I can't show this very well, but I'll give it a bear. I'll give it a bash. So what you want to do is reach your hand in uh, to the little gap, and then you should feel one of them clip on one side like that. You see, it's moving a bit now. Now the one closest to the centre of the car is the more difficult one. Um, <laughs> It does require you to do a bit of uh, gymnastics with your hands to get all the way down. I'm going to use my head to stop it falling out. So I've got that. Yeah, there we go. Got that clip. And then the light comes out. You've got the uh, light out. You'll see you've got the cable leading to the connector in the back. Um, so what you want to do is there's a little tab on the back of the connector. Um, you literally just want to push that tab in and pull out the uh, connector. Might take a little bit of wiggling. Um, try not to pull on these wires because you might break the little pins inside. I've taken out the uh, connector from the back of the light and um, this is where things start to uh, differ from if you had the LED um, rear lights. Because um, I've got the halogens, I have to basically um, move one of these wires to a separate pin and that'll then enable me to code the lights to light up correctly when you break. Um, there's some uh, forum posts about uh, how to do this. Um, I'll try and show you as best I can with uh, one hand. But essentially, um, there's a, you, know, you wanna move the cable that's in this purple one that's in pin one into pin five. You'll see there's a little blue grommet in there. Um, you have to take that little grommet out um, and move the pins. Uh, focus is going a bit weird there. Um, but first you have to take this little purple clip off um, so you can remove the, uh, the pins. So I'll give that a bash, um, see how I get on. So I kind of propped my phone up on the uh, parcel shelf at the moment so I can show you how to take this out um, as best I can. So you want to get your nail underneath this little purple clip and you literally just pull it, should just slide out sort of like jagged, like a sawtooth. Um, once you've got it like that, you just pull it out and that's what it looks like. And I'm doing it in little tip is that I've got it through that little um, hole in the side, uh, just so that if anything falls, it just falls into the boot and not uh, down into all the gunk that's under the uh, lights. Uh, so now we've got uh, these that little purple clip out. There's five little pins in here. Um, now what you'll need is a either a cocktail stick or um, a pin. Uh, in order to remove these. I've just brought one out. There it is. <laughs> well, I have a uh, a corn a corn on the cob holder. There, there you go. That's for, for barbecuing. But essentially, um, what you want to do is go to pin number one and you just apply a bit of gentle pressure into the uh, pin just to sort of unseat it and then you should be able to pull it 
out. There we go. See, um, it just slides out. And be careful not to bend this. Uh, just be really gentle. Um, and then for the little grommet, you do the same thing, get the pin. There's a little hole in the grommet. Sorry, this isn't great. I'll try and zoom in. There we go. Hopefully you can see this. Uh, there's a little grommet in there. I'm going to put the pin in and just kind of lift it out if I can. This is essentially just to stop moisture and stuff getting in the uh, the hole. And now that now that little grommet's come out, just put that into one side. You can use that to uh, go back into this hole um, once you've moved the pin over. Uh, so now what you want to do is make sure that sorry this is really zoomed in. I'll zoom out a bit. You want to make sure that the pin goes in uh, the right way round, essentially. So that this little, you see there's these little tabs inside the hole is pointing towards the camera. Uh, so you might have to fiddle around with this wiring at the top just to get give yourself enough slack. Um, but essentially you just want to make sure it's facing the right way. I believe it's that way. Uh, put it in pin hole number five. Come on. Uh, I am putting it in the right way, aren't I? Yeah. There we go. Putting it in pin number five, and you push it down from from the top. I'm just pushing it from the wire until you hear a really slight click probably can't pick it up on the microphone um, but it does kind of click into place and now uh, you want to put in your little grommet back into pin number one or hole number one uh, put it the right way round and then put your little purple clip back on sorry about that uh, so you put your purple clip back on like so and that is it for the rewiring side of things uh, you literally just do the same thing on the other side um, I'll probably only show you uh, the left hand side um, because it's exactly the same process on the right hand side so uh, once you've done the rewiring you will grab your new Union Jack light uh, preferably the one for the correct side of the car <laughs> So this is the one that I've resealed. Um, what you want to do is connect up the connector into the back. Um, first, it'll only go one way because it's got a little uh, groove sticking out of it. Um, probably not going to be able to show you with one hand here. Uh, so bear with me, I'll show you when it's all connected. Guys, uh, so I've just finished screwing in the T20 screws. Um, just a word of uh, well, just something to note. Um, it did take quite a while to screw in the top one, and I think that's literally just because of the foam backing it has to compress behind the screw. So it kind of looks like when you're screwing it in that it's not actually getting any closer to the bodywork, but um, it's literally just compressing that foam to make sure that it's watertight at the back. So uh, just keep screwing it until uh, it gets a bit tighter. It does take a little while. Um, but hopefully that shouldn't be too much of an issue. Okay, so moment of truth really. Um, so stick this uh, light surround back on. Um, I had issues previously when I first resealed. And you might have noticed that I did a couple more dollops of uh, sealant just because um, now it's in situ. Uh, so it was a bit of a stretch of the uh, sealant and I put it on. Um, and also there's still some some scratches from the sanding that I was doing um, none on the front of the the light just up in the corner here um, I thought I'd I gave it a go um, with some scratch remover and some polish uh, but couldn't quite sort of get the uh, the amount of 
coverage on on this part when it was off the car just because it was moving around so much so i will address that um what now it's on the car uh, I've, you know it's fixed in place so it's easier to to polish those marks out um but yeah so let's put this light surround back on it's essentially exactly the same as taking it off but um you just do the whole process in reverse so you pop it on at the bottom and make sure it's all lined up in there then this right hand side should be fairly easy to clip in start from the bottom work your way up and then in the top okay so the light surrounds on now um as good as i can get it there's still a little bit of a gap but that's literally so uh these lights one of the little clips that holds the lights around on was a just broken basically um, and it was pointed at the wrong angle so the lights around wouldn't go on so i literally just had to snap that little clip off um and now the rest of them are holding it on um it's the one in this top left corner which is why it's not as sort of flush as it could be but to be honest that you can't really uh, tell um, so I'm happy with that um, it's going on a lot better than it uh, was before so um, now I'll just uh, do the other side just to point out um, for cars like mine because it's a 210 works it comes with the John Cooper works pro exhaust um, and that means that there's this module in the uh, side uh, you'll notice I've unplugged my exhaust so it's permanently open um, don't tell anyone about that but uh, it makes it more difficult to get to the clips in the back of the light so um, it might be a bit more tricky it's definitely doable um, as I will demonstrate but um, it takes a little bit more time to reach the clips uh, and you've got to do some sort of contortion trick to actually <laughs> get to the clips in the back uh, but just something to be aware of if you've uh, got a pro exhaust. I have both the lights on and the light surrounds. Um, just make sure that once you put all the lights around on that it's clicked all the way around. Um, actually, upon looking at this side, um, I don't really have to worry about this. It seems to be pretty much exactly the same uh, kind of flushness, if you like. So much happier with that now um last thing to do is to put these little things back pour vous there we go uh now it's on to coding um i will just show you what they currently look like um this is after i've swapped the pins over um and i'll kind of try and demonstrate why um they need to be coded uh, because you should find that um, the daytime running or the, the the running lights which is these diagonal parts of the Union Jack um, will come on at the same time as the brake light which is on the left um, which shouldn't happen so that's what the coding is needed for um, in order for you to be able to drive safely on the road <laughs> Plug in your V gate down here into the OBD port and you should see it light up and then you go into BIMA code and connect to it. So um, I believe it's in BDC. I'm going to look really silly if it's not. Okay so we're in BIMA code, sorry for uh, cutting off there. So um, we're in the BDC and you want to scroll down to voltage monitoring. Uh, I believe, keep scrolling down, keep scrolling down, voltage monitoring. Okay, so here's where you've got all the lights and stuff. Um, you might see that you know, I've got my daytime running lamp um, set to LEDs because I've got some in the front. Uh, and you want to go to 
Uh, tail lights. Here we go. So tail lights. Uh, cold and warm monitoring. Uh, I believe you just want to turn these to not active. So we're going to tail lights and turn that to not active. Not active. Tail lights to LED. Uh, tail lights inner. Not active. Not active. Tail lights inner lamp. LED. Adaptive brake light warm monitoring. Not active. Not active. Adaptive brake light lamp. Change that to LED. And I believe that's everything. I'm just going to have a look. Because I believe the um, brake light warm monitoring. Here we go. Not active, not active. I have no idea if uh, all of these are required, but I'm literally just saying the rear lights are LEDs. So <laughs> uh, turn lights rear, these are also um, LEDs as well. So turn those to not active, not active, LED. Um, so I'm gonna just code these now and see what happens if it's worked so we start coding and it's just preparing coding uh things in the car will start beeping and it will shut down and it will start up again um and i'll do another video at the back just to see what happens with the lights and whether they're now fixed and not flickering anymore um so yeah see you in a sec Uh, so I've got something on the brakes at the moment. Um, as you can see, they're not flickering uh, anymore. Uh, so that's a good sign. Um, so hopefully it's all fixed. Uh, now all I have to do is code it so that uh, this doesn't light up at the same time as this. Um, and that this comes on when the front headlights are on. So let's open up Bimacode, connect. Um, and this is going to require to go into the expert mode of the BDC. So uh, don't stray from these uh, instructions, really, because I think you could probably do some damage. Uh, so we'll just wait for it to connect in. OK, so you go into BDC. And you have to wait again. So I'll catch you after it's done. Okay, so this is just finishing up now, so hopefully we are in. Right, so you want to go into expert mode. Warning. Okay, and then go down to 3065 LCE lamp mapping uh, 4. And then you want to go to mapping stand, uh, standard H2L output. Uh, this will be on BL underscore L, you want this to be off, and you click OK, and then you want to go to mapping standal H2R output, it would be on BLR, you go off, then you go to scroll down, you go to Bremsel 2L output, uh, this will be on SL underscore L, like that, you want this to be off, click OK, and same for the right hand side, Bremsel to R output, SL underscore R, change this to off, click OK, and then you go out and you click code, and then start coding, and hopefully nothing will go wrong and it will code. Writing code data, it should be quite quick, I think, yeah, 50%. Then it will finish coding and it will restart the ECU in the car. You'll hear bongs, it will start doing stuff with the aircon. Um, and then it's done, okay. So you just disconnect from that. 
And then you can go and check the back of the car. Nice. So I'll notice if you've got your side lights turned on. Uh, the Union Jack part lights up. It's only flickering in this video because of the refresh rate of the camera. Uh, so actually, like, in in real life, it's not flickering at all. Um, and then we will go round and we will try and put the brake lights on. So I'll show you those. There you have it, uh, I've installed the Union Jack lights on a halogen mini. Um, I reckon it'd probably take you maybe about 45 minutes um, to do, just because you've got to swap the pins around. Um, and obviously you need to do the coding, but um, that very rarely goes wrong unless you really mess up. So um, yeah. Thanks for watching. If you've got any questions about uh, anything I've done, then let me know in the comments. Um, and yeah, hope to see you again in the next video. Cheers.